Hey guys, I'm back with another book talk and this is a book I really wanted to read before the movie came out and as of currently while I'm um, filming this, the movie was supposed to come out like a week ago and I still haven't seen anything about it in theaters so I don't know if they pushed back the launch date or whatever and sometimes I don't necessarily agree with really hyped books that everybody loves and so I was really hesitant about this book for that reason and also I don't really like the title. And the book is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Funny story, I actually thought it was me, Earl, and the dying girl. I didn't know there was an and between me and Earl. So, yeah. And I definitely like this cover a lot better than the original cover. Another reason I didn't want to pick it up is because the original cover looks kind of... I don't know, I just don't like it. But I really like this because it's like, it's simple. It's one basic color. And then you've got the little stick figures and then the title, the author, and a little blurb. And the little thing that lets you know it's a major motion picture now. To start off talking about this book, I want to talk about the characters. I love Greg. I think he is hilarious. I definitely enjoyed reading from his perspective because he's not exactly the outcast of the high school um, social hierarchy, but he doesn't exactly have friends. He's kind of friends with everybody, but he's not friends at the same time. It's just kind of like a mutual acquaintance, like, I'll be nice to you, and in return, please don't beat me up and shove me in a locker. And the way he just, like, thinks about things is really funny. And the way the book is written where he's putting an input as he's writing the book, like, oh my gosh, that sentence didn't make sense. I don't even know why I wrote it, but I'm too lazy to, you know, take it out. I think that's funny. That definitely adds a lot of personality to the story. And I definitely love Greg. Um, on the other hand, we have Earl. And we see quite a bit of Earl in this book, too, since it's, like, his partner in crime, but not really. Like, they're best friends. But they're not, like, really friends at the same time. They just kind of, like, make movies together and... Earl likes to eat the strange food Greg's dad eats. And Earl, I think he was really funny. He's definitely one of those kick-butt side characters that I love. In the beginning, I didn't see another side of him besides, you know, that he's just like a pissed off guy. And, you know, if he's in a happy mood, it's very rare. He loves to use foul language. And maybe he's not all that bright. And so, but... Towards the end of the book, especially when it gets closer to Rachel dying, you get to see more of Earl and that he does care and he has a more sensitive and sophisticated side to him than what you're originally introduced to when he first appears. And the fact that he is talking to Greg and telling Greg to stop being such a baby and like actually think about what's going on, stop thinking about yourself. Like Rachel is sitting in a hospital bed fighting for her life. And all Greg is like, I really don't want to go over there. And I just love Earl because he made Greg realize like what was actually happening. Like this isn't something that's just going to like go over. Like this is a losing battle. Like this is your last time with her. And the fact that he just like, he could bring that up just amazed me because it's not what fit into per his personality when we first meet him. And I just loved how um, the author wrote Earl that way. It's written as Greg. Greg is writing the story. This is his story that he's telling. And, you know, I just love how he puts, like, inputs in that, like, you know, oh, well, I don't understand why I put that in. Like, this is his story. He's like, this is so stupid. I don't even understand why I'm writing this book. It doesn't matter what I put here anyways because you probably have already put the book down by now. And I just found that so funny. And I love how like majority of the conversations are written in the movie script style and made it a lot more entertaining to read and I loved it and especially when he does like the lists and stuff like I just think that was a really interesting touch into the story and definitely just to shake things up a bit uh, with it and I think that helps make the story go by a lot faster too besides it already being kind of a really short book I loved it it was so great and amazing and I just love the writing and definitely Greg is definitely a favorite narrator. This book is definitely a lot different than the other cancer-based books out there. Fault in Our Stars is a sappy romance book. Um, breaks your heart. I actually didn't cry reading the book. I cried watching the movie um, twice. It was awful. Not the movie, my crying. The movie was amazing and I like it brought me to tears. But this takes a definitely a different take on that and I really love the whole thing where Greg is talking and he does it several times like throughout the book where he's like if this was a normal you know young adult novel um, we'd find ourselves uh, hopelessly falling in love with each other and all this stuff. Those parts of the book just crack me up because like I don't know it's just 
kind of it's kind of more enjoyable to add a funny side to such a depressing topic. Like there's a lot of humor added into this book even though you know the book is definitely dealing with a very heavy and sad topic. The way that um, the author incorporated all this humor into it really makes me enjoy it and definitely makes me love this book even more and I kind of want to reread it now after I've already finished it. There's one line in here that really speaks to me, made me laugh. It's in the epilogue um, after you find out that this whole book is actually written for Pittsburgh University to reevaluate Greg's acceptance and reaccept him into the university after, you know, everything he's dealt with. And it says, although let me also say this, just because I'm unretired doesn't mean I'll be making a film out of this book. There is no way in hell that is going to happen. When you convert a good book to a film, stupid things happen. And we can all agree that that is the truth. That happens all the time. We can have plenty of examples for number one. The number one worst movie to book to movie adaption was Percy Jackson. We all know that the movies were horrible. Rick Reardon even says the movies are horrible. You ask him about it and he's like, what movies? Like, that's when you realize you should not mess with a good book and try to turn it into a movie because you're always going to disappoint people. And if you are going to turn it into a movie, get a director or the screenplay artist or whoever does the really good adaptations that everybody's loved. Like, I personally love The Fault in Our Stars. I think it's one of the best ones out there. I'm really excited about Paper Towns. I'm actually reading it right now. Uh, catching The Hunger Games movies are amazing. Um, I think Divergent was pretty good. My friend thought it was awful, but learn from your mistakes. If you're going to make a movie out of a book, follow the people that actually like succeeded in doing that. Anyways, that's my rant over about turning books to movies. Overall, I gave this a 4.5 stars. Not exactly a 5. I don't know why. I just couldn't bring myself to rate a 5, but I definitely loved it. It is definitely now a favorite, and I really hope I get to go see the movie soon. Alright, that is it for this book talk. I'll see you guys next time with a book talk, top 5 Wednesday, or a tag video. Until then, I'm Chrissy. Goodbye!